All right, folks, again, thank you for joining. It's not February, it is March, and it's the 29th. So, thanks for joining. Joining, welcome to our 29th uh, Core Dev call. As always, a little bit of context. These Core Dev calls are for core contributors to present what they've been working on, discuss upcoming features and protocol changes with community members like you. So, while there is time for Q&A after after each topic, you are highly encouraged to continue the conversation over forums, Discord, as well as GitHub. Everything is out in the open and we do want your feedback. I'll paste the link to the Graphs ecosystem calendar um, here and in the show notes, just so you can subscribe to all of these future calls and um, yeah, interact with our speakers from the Core Dev community. Um, lastly, I highly encourage you also to uh, visit the forum. Core Dev teams have been um, posting updates on a dedicated section. I will also um, paste that link in the chat and in the show notes. These are posted on a monthly basis and it's a really nice way of um, getting up to speed with everything that's happening within the Graphs ecosystem. L okay, so looking at the agenda, we have four topics. Um, first, we're going to have GraphOps, Sarah from GraphOps, um, the team has recently launched an all-in-one dashboard that's focused on network performance insights that's called GraphSeer. I believe it was publicly launched yesterday, so it's pretty fresh um, and there are plenty of upcoming interesting things that I hope you can dig into during today's session. Next, uh, we'll have BK from Edgenode joining us as well uh, with juicy updates on the big Sunrise initiative we've been sharing with you folks for the last couple of months. We've hit quite an important milestone towards uh, this full de decentralization goal uh, without sacrificing user experience, um, also with a seamless network upgrade process for subgraph developers and consumers. And it's honestly um, pretty incredible what the team has shipped recently and accomplished. So, yeah, stay tuned. Stay tuned, um, BK. We're gonna we're gonna go through all of these very very soon. Next third item: protocol improvements. This is a new GIP. GIP obviously is standing for Graph Improvement Proposal, authored by Edge Node, also aligned with this overarching goal of continuous decentralization. Um, this time by removing or reducing the risks with um, potential network central point of failures. So we'll go over what the subgraph availability in Oracle is, its role, and what the introduction of this new subgraph availability manager will bring alongside, uh, alongside new uh, Oracle operators. Lastly, Fourth item, more geared uh, towards indexers, let's say. We're celebrating this great milestone as well. That is the native or a facilitated integration of Firehose with key execution clients like Geth or Open or sorry, uh, Go Ethereum and also Aragon uh, very, very soon. This is the result of months of work by the Streaming Fast team in close collaboration with the lead developers of that client, Geth. And uh, yeah, it's the most prolific execution client in the EVM ecosystem. And so we'll go over the details and what this means for the graph and pretty much all the Ethereum based chains and ecosystems really. So that's the agenda. We have four major topics. We're eight minutes in. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I will invite uh, Sarah from GraphOps to Join us. Sarah, you're up. Can you speak? Let me see. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. There you go. Okay. Ah, thank you. But I cannot yes. share my screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm making you co-host. Now you can. Apologies. Should be good thank now. Thank you. Thank you, Pedro. Okay. Hi guys, this is Sahra from GraphOps. I will share graphs here with you. Can you see my screen? Is everything all right? Yes, it is. Great. So um, graphs here is one of the products we have been working on recently at GraphOps and we shared it on IOH two days ago. So as Pedro said, it's super, super fresh. 
So we really wanted to share it with you guys as well and get your feedback too. Um, what is Graph Zero? It's a graph protocol explorer. It's an application with both on-chain and off-chain data and analytics on indexing performance, protocol metrics, and many more. Uh, as you all know, GraphOps is also an indexer. So this app is built by an indexer for other indexers. We really kept in mind the um, point of view and needs of an indexer while building GraphSeer. And um, we need your feedback to evolve GraphSeer because um, this is indexer, this is an indexer-centric product and um, community-centric product. If you want to see something on GraphSeer, please let us know. And um, we're going to try to make it happen for you. We have a live uh, demo in a moment and a feedback session at the end. So if you could leave your feedback, we're going to leave a feedback form. We, we would really appreciate it. Um, next, I want to talk about why are we building graphs here? First of all, um, since we are a core developer and an indexer, we know how um, how to be on the supply side of data. You know, we're building subgraphs, substreams, we're working on the graph. And as an indexer, we use these tools to serve the data, blockchain data to the users. But building graphs here makes us the end user and really lets us understand the end user. And we, will, we believe that this is going to help us become a better core developer and a better indexer. We also realize that there are not many tools to analyze the quality of service of our indexing operations. So really wanted to create an app that will let both us and other indexers to analyze their indexing operations and hopefully get better. We also wanted to provide a good app for all the users in the graph ecosystem to understand the marketplace. Um, the graph is evolving with the world of data services and new gateways are being added to the graph. We will make sure to evolve graphs here alongside the graph to stay relevant and to stay as a good source of information um, for the whole ecosystem. And let's see graphs here together. Um, this is our homepage. We have the general protocol metrics and we have a today card here um, about today's information. You can see how many new rewards and query fees are generated, number of new delegators today. We have no indexers today. We had one two days ago, new subgraph deployments and so on. We also have some top um, indexers and top subgraph deployments tables. Right now, we rank indexers by query fees collected, but we're going to change this very soon to query fees settled in last 90 days. And we have more ideas on how to rank indexers um, for relevant uh, metrics so that we can provide more insights on this homepage. Um, and top subgraph deployments are currently ranked by current Cigna. And then we have some general pages with all the indexers and all the subgraph deployments. You can um, sort here and search here to find. Um, whatever you're looking for. And this is an indexers page. We have many metrics that might be interesting um, to you, but I will talk, I will be talking about historical APRs here. Um, I think on IOH people were confused because there was there was a discrepancy between the explorers APRs and this ones and I looked into them. I think they're estimated APRs. Whereas we calculate the um, historical APRs here, we use the last 90 days data. We take into account um, the query fees, rewards, indexers, self-stake, and delegated stake to calculate um, nine different APRs here. And we have plans to also um, make calculations and you know display estimated APRs. That was a feature request. But so far, we have the historical APRs. We also have a performance tab with the quality of service data. You can see some of the metrics here, um, average query fees, query count, query fees, and these are the total query fees daily. And the query success rate, indexer latency, and average blocks behind. Um, maybe something to point out here is, you know, when you look at these two charts, you can see that when the average indexer latency is at peak, we also see that average blocks behind was at peak, maybe indexer this day. Um, had some trouble with their operations, you could say. Uh, we really wanted this tab to um, allow indexers to understand their operations, and we are aiming to add more charts. And one of the requests we got was to maybe um, make, this, make this data more modular, divide them by subgraph, maybe by chain. That's also a very good feedback we'll take into consideration. You can see all the allocations of the indexer in, uh, of an indexer here. 
Um, we can go to other indexers to maybe look at some interesting cases. Um, this, for instance, um, this indexer had a very, you know, good day once. We can go and look at their allocations to see what happened. I would sort by the indexing rewards because that looks like, you know, the top day with the rewards. And then we can see when you sort that on this day, they closed an allocation. And I was really curious how they got so many rewards with so little stake because I would expect other indexers to also allocate to this subgraph. And I saw that they actually did in very similar periods with a lot more allocation actually, but they gained nothing because they provided a zero POI. So you can actually go and see what's happening on the graph protocol by you know investigating. Uh, on graphs here, maybe some other thing we can look at. Um, we can compare some indexers. If anyone wants to point out maybe um, what's the similarity between this indexer's performance and this indexer's performance, does anything strike your attention when I do this especially? I'll check the chat if anyone. Says anything. Can you do it again, Sarah? So we're just switching between yeah. two indexers. Can you just like notice something in these charts that is similar? Well, the latency and the total balance differ differs. Yes, but I'm looking for something that's similar. But I can point it out myself. Oh, similar. So everything else, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I was pointing out the main differences, I guess. Oh yeah. Um, so let me check the chat if someone has said more queries. Latency in pop is high. <laughs> I was going for uh, those are correct. I was going for the peak in the query count in very similar dates because that's crazy. Look at it. Like at fourth of March, there are many many queries served in both of these indexers, this started at third, this started at fourth. So I was curious what could be the reason. Maybe they're serving um, a similar subgraph. And then I think if we sort, sort, sort by the query fees collected, we can see that that peak is streamer. I think that's how you pronounce them. And you can see that on the 3rd of March, they have many queries served for this specific subgraph. We can again sort by the query fees collected. You can see those two indexers here. And I was curious why this happened. And I stalked this protocol a little bit. And so that they had an announcement, I think a release on a 4th of March. And we can see the query count increase on 3rd of March. I don't know these if these two things are connected. Pinax is here, maybe they can comment. But it's interesting to me that you can actually see the trend even on graphs here by following the query count of a subgraph if that's the case um this is another thing that i wanted to point out you can do on graphs here so this is what we have implemented so far but this is just the beginning this was just the mvp we shared this with an early set of indexers and cordes and got some initial feedback we implemented some of that that feedback, we're working on the rest. And then we had the public lunch on IOH, or maybe not so public IOH lunch. We're gonna have another lunch I hear next week, the real public lunch. And then here we are sharing this with you guys. We really try to gather as much feedback as possible at this stage and on the upcoming stages as well, so that we can make graphs here as best as possible. Some of the next steps we have in mind is GraphCast integration. I forgot to show you guys actually that we have some cute little badges for all the indexers that run at Subgraph Radio. Um, that's also good to do. We recommend you do that if you're an indexer. We want to display more stats, like um, how many messages an indexer is sending, how many subgraphs they're sending messages for. Today we realized that there are, I think, two indexers. One of the mistakes good that um, covers almost 500 subgraphs, which is great to see. Um, considering we have over a thousand active subgraphs, that's quite a good uh, number. Um, and then another step we have in mind um, is that as the graph becomes a multi-gateway um, protocol, 
we want to make sure that graph series deploys indexers go to analyze and understand their indexing performance. So we will make sure that graph series evolves with the graph. Um, you can visit graph series from this link. Pilar is going to send it on chat. Um, you should use the username and password that's also going to be on chat. I'll leave this here for three more seconds. And we Perfect. would appreciate if you guys could leave us some feedback. Um, we have a feedback form. Um, yep, yeah, thank you so much. Nice, thanks, Sarah. I had questions prepared, but it's not like you, I didn't see your slides. So you, you kind of covered everything I and wanted to ask about the roadmap and how can people reach out okay. to get some feedback. Uh, maybe as the pillar mentioned in the chat, so let me um, correct one thing I said earlier. It hasn't been publicly launched. I mean, I guess it's clear now since you've seen uh, the beta link and the uh, credentials to test it out. It was just uh, presented in uh, IOH yesterday. So any timelines you want to share, folks, on how, when you think people will be able to, like when, when is the, the, the final launch com coming? Um, I think Pilar said next week, but uh, she can comment more on that. Um, people can use these password. I mean, we're sharing these videos publicly anyway. They can visit Graphsy right now, but next Monday, Tuesday. So. Awesome. Yeah, and there's the credentials there for whoever wants to test it out. Yeah. Cool. Any questions for Sarah or GraphOps in general? I'm monitoring the chat, folks. If you want to speak up, just uh, comment on the, in the chat. I'll and then you'll, if you want to speak, just let me know as well. I'll give you the permissions to do so. Okay, cool. I don't see follow-up questions, but I'll keep monitoring the chat. So let's continue because I know BK, you're in a tight, um, you don't have a lot, of, a lot of time. So let's start. Um, can you, yeah, you should, you're, okay, you're good. Perfect. Uh, can I, can you see my screen? Yes, sir. It's perfect. Awesome. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Brandon Kramer, or BK. I'm a product manager at Edge and Node. And uh, I apologize, I'll have to jump off briefly after the presentation. So open to hearing any questions, um, post them in chat, and do my best uh, to respond to those. Um, but I'm giving a, roughly a 10-minute update on how the graph sunrise is going. You probably saw on socials. Uh, that we completed uh, Sunrise, or sorry, the first uh, phase of Sunrise called Sunray. And I'm gonna talk about some of the features that we shipped during this process. Um, so the good news is we are shipping. We shipped a lot of cool stuff during the past quarter or so. Um, I break this up into kind of three sets of features. Uh, the first is a free plan of 100,000 queries for all uh, uh, subgraph developers and um, uh, data consumers. Uh, we also have uh, card and debit payments with recurring payments, um, mainly through Stripe. Uh, we have a predictable um, pricing query or a query pricing of $40 per million queries. And we also have a Subgraph Studio pricing page that we've released on the graph.com uh, to communicate that a, a little bit more clearly, uh, which is something that we, uh, we, would, <laughs> we certainly needed to improve on uh, looking back. Uh, we also have um, uh, the upgrade indexer, uh, which was uh, went live about two or three months ago and enabled 40 plus chains on the network. Uh, alongside of that, we had a, a really big marketing campaign and released uh, supported networks pages, which I'll walk through in just a minute. And then um, lastly, um, covering the upgrade flow, which is essentially an optimized uh, UX to bring subgraphs uh, from the hosted service over to the graph network. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, I'll cover uh, a lot of these things here. So the first thing that we shipped is uh, a free plan. Um, and we did that alongside of a number of um, billing UI improvements, which is something we've got a lot of feedback on from uh, our, our users, mainly developers. Um, as you can see in this video here, uh, we have a free plan um, and then added a number of KPIs so users can track uh, the number of queries that they made and then when um, their plan is going to renew each month. Um, you can see if I had used my free plan, um, you'd also have uh, queries made, uh, how often it renews, and a billing chart to be able to track uh, how much you paid as well as the number of queries. Um, in this, you see that you can upgrade into the growth plan, which is essentially um, moving from a free to a growth plan means you're uh, paying as you go. Uh, we allow users to pay in cryptocurrency or GRT in one to three month, one three month and six month intervals, 
as well as including the bridge. So if you have GRT on Arbitrum or Ethereum, it doesn't matter. You can be able to pay um, within this streamlined billing flow. Obviously, we have um, the, the uh, Stripe integration here as well. Uh, that allows users to pay in debit or credit cards. Um, and that happens on a recurring basis each month. So you can basically set it and forget it and have your credit card set up and pay for those queries um, each month. Uh, in the next flow, I'll show you um, our growth plan. And this looks very similar, but you can see this a little bit more active uh, because my uh, because this account is set up for um, a growth plan. Uh, so here, you again, you can see the number of queries you made over the course of the period, uh, how many API keys you have, and then you have all of your subgraphs in Subgraph Studio that you've either deployed to Studio or published on the graph network. Under billing, uh, we have a number of those KPIs as well. So again, you can track what your usage is as well as how often you've paid um, over the course of the past several months. Uh, and as you see here, you can track the number of queries that you made over the course of the current billing period, um, which is a month now. We've kind of shifted that from a week to a month to make that a little bit more um, predictable and uh, a little less frequent. Here in the side pane, you can see that you can upgrade uh, to, um, you can add GRT to your um, billing balance. And we provided a little slider to estimate what your price, uh, what your queries are going to be. You can withdraw GRT at any time, so you're, there's no vendor lock-in. And then we can also set up uh, credit cards. Um, you notice that there is also Stripe's link. Um, so if you've used Stripe on other platforms and have your e have your email, you can sign up, and that kind of streamlines the um, process of signing up within the context of our billing flow here. So a lot of great optimizations. Again, the, the TLDR is that a uh, free plan of 100,000 queries is now live. Uh, we have a growth plan that enables two kinds of payment types, GRT uh, or um, credit card payments. And then those recurring payments will be uh, available with credit card as well. Um, we're hoping to add um, recurring payments uh, for crypto uh, natives as well, um, but that will be a, a little while off. Uh, so as I mentioned before, we uh, have we felt the need to move to a more predictable pricing model. In the past, um, our, our pricing wasn't as transparent as we would have liked, and we felt there was a need to just go to a flat payment mechanism. Um, and we're now having uh, that price set at forty dollars per million queries. Um, that helps users predict what they're going to um, what the costs are going to be, um, so that they can kind of project out months in advance uh, and be able to um, do the accounting in a much more um, plausible or a uh, much easier way. Uh, alongside of that, we've um, shipped this um, Subgraph Studio pricing page. And as you can see here, um, we have that can be accessed in the top navigation. You can see this beautiful design here that uh, our design team put together and product engineering integrated. Um, and you can see that the price is very clearly uh, out, uh, laid out at the top of the page. Um, at multiple points, you have CTAs where you can access Studio and set up your billing. We have a number of testimonials and important KPIs, uh, so you can understand what you're getting with, when you sign up for, for the graph. Um, in Subgraph Studio in particular. Uh, so we shipped that uh, just this past uh, Tuesday, and there's that awesome slider that you can use to kind of predict what your pricing will be if you're a develop de developer or data consumer. Um, the next set of um, features that we shipped are uh, mainly start with the upgrade indexer. Um, this is basically um, kind of like a, a baseline indexer that covers all subgraphs on the network and provides some uh, lever or some aspect of coverage across uh, 40 different chains. Uh, so we ha now have that integrated and available. We had this awesome marketing campaign uh, a few weeks ago, I think, um, that was incredibly successful. Uh, and, and so huge shout out to our marketing team for all the hard work that they've been doing there. Um, but alongside of that announcement, we also shipped the supported networks pages. Um, so if you go up to uh, ecosystem and then click supported networks, you'll be able to see these kind of marketing slash docs pages. Um, and basically you have cards where you can click on um, mainnets and test nets and see important information about those, including um, development details, the number of queries over on the chain over the past 30 days, the number of active subgraphs, and important quality of service metrics. So these will continue to update on, on roughly a daily basis. And our plan is to fully um, kind of build this page out to make it a much easier place uh, for a developer that was focused on a specific chain to get up and going quickly. And what we're hoping to do there is um, integrating um, a, a kind of a curated view of subgraphs so it's easy, easy to pick the most valuable subgraphs, as well as some examples um, uh, to, to get started and develop subgraphs. Uh, right now, um, I think our, our basic version right now only includes subgraph support, um, but we want to include um, sub, things like substreams, 
uh, fire hose and, and other um, products as, as well in this. And we're just on the cusp of, of doing that. So hopefully here in the next uh, cycle of sprints, uh, we'll be able to integrate all that and, and make it public. I know some of them are, are updated and show um, support for fire hose and substreams. We want to continue to add integration and, and um, make that a little bit more um, comprehensive for all kinds of developers. Uh, the last thing that I'll, I'll show, um, and this is a little less curated video, um, but this is uh, Marcus Drain, uh, who's a uh, DevRel on our team, uh, put this together to show the value of the upgrade flow. Uh, for those who don't know, the upgrade flow is essentially an optimized UX flow that helps users move uh, subgraphs that they currently have on the hosted service over to the graph uh, to, to subgraph studio and the graph network. Uh, basically, any query or any subgraphs that have more than one query are eligible for this um, process. Um, you'll go through and you'll be able to select the different subgraphs that you want to move over to the graph network, as you see in this video from Marcus's video. Um, and then as you click through these, uh, it's a fairly it's a fairly simple process of one to two or one to three clicks. Uh, you'll be able to move those over, and uh, we'll uh, as you know we'll cover those um, the the gas costs of publishing those to the network uh, as long as they're over that um, one query over the past thirty days. Um, so we think this is a huge optimization in terms of UX. I know in the past it was uh, not uh, not the easiest thing to do, and it required a couple uh, several steps. We think this will speed things up in, in the transition to move to the graph network. Um, you should expect a timeline um, for kind of the next stage, uh, which is Sunbeam. Um, that will be a 60-day period where we have the upgrade window. Um, and Edge Node will be here to support any um, users of the current hosted service to be able to move up or move their subgraphs over to Subgraph Studio and ultimately publish on the graph network. Um, we'd recommend to kind of keep your eye out in the next um, in the next few weeks here uh, to, to uh, see when this next window is going to start. Uh, we'll you know, handle any support or um, both technical support and BD support during that time period. Um, and obviously, we're very excited about this announcement and, and the, uh, the changes that are happening within the ecosystem. So. I'm happy to answer any questions and offer any support. Uh, let me know if I can uh, do anything to help out. This is incredible. I see a lot of clapping. BK, do you do you have time? If there's follow up questions, can you stay a couple of minutes? Yeah, I can stay. Yeah, I can stay a couple of minutes. Couple of minutes. Cool. So let me take a look at chat. Yeah, it's just a lot of. Okay, a lot of clapping, a lot of congrats. Oh, okay, awesome. Um, I do have a question. What is uh, what? What's your favorite feature? I know you've been heavily involved in this, and what is the thing that you're most excited about? Uh, well, I'm partial to all the billing stuff because I've been working very closely on that for a very long time. Um, I was into uh, yeah, develop help uh, kind of uh, cater a lot of the stuff, but probably the thing I'm most excited about is the upgrade flow. To be honest. Um, yeah. That is a huge UX accomplishment and being able to move things over in that way. So um, I think that's a huge unlock to the ecosystem and really um, bring it to the next level. 100% agree. It's not easy going decentralized and not um, having a degraded UX experience. So what's been done here is pretty, pretty incredible. And so developers will still have the free tier. There was a lot of concerns about the host of services go, going away. What's what's happening? So to be clear, it's still there. Hackers, we love you. We wanna we wanna support your projects and your ideas. So keep hacking. The studio is still there. You have a bunch of free queries. And if you wanna go to prod with this with our decentralized uh, decentralized network, it's just as easy as this upgrade flow that BK showed. I mean, it's 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 easy. And payments wise, credit cards, we all love it. Hopefully that will also reduce friction. So essentially, yeah, we thanks for sending all the feedback. Um, I think we shipped something pretty, pretty cool. We listened, uh, we shipped and keep sending us some feedback. We're always here. And thank you, BK and the whole team for building all, all of this. I know it's uh, took us a long time, but I think it I think it's super nice. Huge shout out to Thanks everybody. Yeah, as you know, all the core dev teams, everybody in the graph ecosystem for the support and, and shipping this. Uh, we're very proud. Absolutely. So lastly, the last, the best way for people to share feedback on all of these or get support if needed is, may I assume, Discord? Yeah, Discord. Um, I do believe we're going to start integrating some um, technical support as well, just in case there are any, any issues. And and um, that pricing page is going to be a good place to to look out if you need um, kind of uh, BD support. 
um, or, or business support, um, feel free to reach out though. Um, we're always on Discord, uh, at Telegram, we're, we're everywhere. So happy to help, just let us know. Great, thank you. All right, BK, thanks so much for taking the time and joining us. I don't see questions, so, and I don't want to hold you up much longer. So thanks again for joining and all of your work. I'll see you, see you around. Thank you. All right, so uh, Miguel, Edge Node, yes. Uh, I did an intro on this and uh, I'm not gonna repeat myself, so I'll just bring Miguel on stage. Is he around? Yes. Yeah, there you go. Um, am I sharing the correct screen? <laughs> the GIP? I yeah. don't see anything yet. I see a Zoom warning that you started screen sharing, but I don't see anything. Uh, let me try again. Yeah, I don't know why it says your screen sharing is paused. I don't know why. Or how to you may it. have multiple monitors uh, maybe yes. or yeah. maybe you're full screen and i think i had that issue before your screen share is loading there you go you can see it yeah. now uh, now i'm lost between my screen sorry guys <laughs> okay here we go um, all right, yeah, so my name is Miguel. I'm with uh, Agile Node in the smart contracts team. And yeah, here to talk about uh, this improvement proposal. Um, I'll go over first uh, the over the staff ab ab availability oracle. Um, yeah, so for those who don't know, um, this is a system that um, currently Agile Node is running. And uh, what what this uh, does is uh, it checks uh, the validity and the existence of uh, subgraph manifest files on on IPFS, and uh, that it uh, that they're built correctly and essentially um, that subgraphs are um, indexing and supported networks um, so as to uh, be uh, eligible for rewards. So for indexing rewards. So basically. Uh, what this does is every five minutes it pulls all the subgraph deployment deployments from the network subgraph and um, verifies that the manifest exists and uh, checks the network that they're indexing. And if some of these steps it fails um, to get the required um, yeah information, uh, it sends a transaction to the rewards manager contract denying uh, rewards for that uh, yeah. Uh, subgraph deployment ID is what it works with. So um, yeah, hopefully that was clear enough, but in a high level information, it just, it either uh, allows or denied rewards for subgraphs. Um, so for example, if an indexer is indexing a subgraph uh, and then um, this availability oracle detects that that subgraph is not eligible for rewards, then it will deny that subgraph. And then when the indexer goes to present uh, POI uh, to close their allocation to get to receive indexing rewards, it will receive zero rewards because um, this was denied. And uh, yeah, so as I mentioned, um, this is currently run by Edge and Node, and we have a single instance of this running. Um, but this is on a, a public GitHub repository that you can see over here. Um, I'll share these links afterwards. Um, all right, so the improvement proposal is to uh, further decentralize uh, this system. So um, uh, so we're adding a new um, smart contract called uh, Subgraph Availability Manager. And um, this will be only for L2, uh, so yeah, Arbitrum and Arbitrum 1 and Arbitrum Sepolia. And uh, what this will do is uh, we'll uh, create an interface. So instead of having one single Oracle running, we'll be able to have five different Oracles running. Um, so in this first iteration also, the Oracles will be run by core devs teams. And yeah, we already 
um, have five core devs teams who volunteered and um, they'll be running each of the these five teams, one Oracle, and then the, uh, the interface of this new smart contract will have a voting mechanism where um, instead of yeah, being just a single one, um, Oracle uh, being the one responsible for allowing or denying rewards, then uh, will require a majority of three votes. And then once those three votes are reached, uh, will trigger the transaction to the rewards manager contract. Um, so, um, yeah, um, and then there's uh, a lot of uh, specifics on, on, on how this works. Um, you can, I'll also share this uh, improvement proposal and you can go over, uh, read and comment if you have any comments. Um, but one of the, um, um, I think one of the important uh, things to mention is uh, we'll try to make this uh, as publicly as possible. So one of the things that we require for these oracles is to um, make the configuration that they are using publicly. And the way that we'll do this is by sending a transaction to a data edge uh, contract. Uh, so all of the oracles uh, will send um, will be required to send this transaction uh, where um, we'll state, um, yeah, like the version that we're running and uh, some specific configurations that the uh, Oracle needs. Um, <clears throat> so the idea is that all Oracle should be running under the same configurations. So um, because depending on these configurations, then it could be um, like it could result in different outcomes um, for uh, the voting. So um, yeah, we'll require that everyone makes this information public and uh, we'll have a subgraph that tracks this information so uh, we can go and check and see um, yeah like if 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 we're seeing like differences in votings then we can go over the configuration and see um, what everyone's running with and uh, try to find um, potential errors um all right so the status of the gip um it's already published uh you can again you can go over on the it's on the forum and also uh the forum has a link to the github repo the github pr um and we already shared it also with the top members uh so the technically uh, the technical advisory board and they've uh, added a couple of comments on the pr that you can also um yeah uh, review and then the next step will be to present uh, the GIP to the council, which yeah, I believe we'll do it soon. Um, and then as for the deployment, I like I mentioned, um, we have the um, five core dev teams that are going to run this. Um, we'll, we, we're on the uh, beginnings of these phases, so um, all of the teams are getting familiar with the uh, repository and yeah, just uh, seeing what what um yeah like uh just running it basically <laughs> and um the other thing is that we have a um uh, we have a slack communication uh channel uh where uh with uh kind of like well everyone went over what the hard what hardware they were gonna use and um the locations and uh different rpc providers so the idea is that um by having different values for these configurations um, will have a more reliable system um, where like if uh, one up RPC goes down, then we're still um, like, there still be four other oracles that will keep this system running. Um, so yeah, so next steps on that will be um, uh, having uh, uh, everyone deploy uh, the oracle on, on testnet first. Uh, once we have the five oracles running uh, against testnet, then we'll be able to deploy the smart contracts and start uh, testing. And then once uh, the testing phase is finished, uh, then we'll proceed with doing the same thing in uh, Arbitrum 1. So again, we're only deploying this on Arbitrum 1. Um, on mainnet, it will be still uh, running under the single instance but by agent node, but um, yeah, like uh, mainnet at the moment is receiving the, I think it's 5% rewards and um, yeah, right. Uh, still not, not clear when, but eventually uh, rewards are going to be zero on mainnet. So we won't need this uh, anymore. 
And yeah, so I think that's everything that I have. I don't know if there's questions. Thanks, Miguel. Looking at the chat, I only see pain, upset. He's not running one instance. Uh, other than that, I don't see any comments or questions yet. Yeah, thanks for sharing, Miguel. Uh, I think you mentioned the technical advisory board, so just want to shout out all of those yeah. that helped to review this and give us the feedback will be taken into account when taking this proposal um, uh, to a vote by the council, um, hopefully next week. At least that's the plan. And yeah, and also thanks for thanks to all the core dev teams that helped um, joining this project and um, help us try to remove at least these potential centralized central part of failures we may have on the network. Um, it's a, a nice step towards full decentralization. So thank you all for joining. All right. Oh, cool. Thanks, Miguel. Thanks for yeah, sharing no, the GIP I, I PR. Those. Yeah, I shared those yeah. links, so please, yeah, like, feel Great. free to go on those, uh, yeah, on, especially on the PR and um, ask any question or comment uh, you like and I'll try to answer. Yeah, and I see the repo for the sub availability oracle as well, so those who want to know more about it can just follow that link. Cool. Um, no questions then? I don't see any, but Miguel, we can keep monitoring the chat. So 15 minutes left, right on time. Um, again, thank you, Miguel. Let's continue. The last topic was uh, Matthew is going to come and talk about this recent work Streaming Fast has done on uh, Geth. It's been taking months, but it's an incredible milestone as well. Let's understand what that means and for the, for the graph and the whole ecosystem and what it really is. So I'm bringing, I'm calling Matthew. There you go. Oh, I see it. Uh, sorry, just give me a second. There you go. You should be able to present now, Matthew. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, good. Yeah. You're good. You're good. You're good. Welcome. It's been a while. Myself. Thanks for yeah, joining. Do you hear me well? I do, and I can also see you. And Great, I'm happy you're cool. you're here. It's been a I, while. I have nothing to really present. I'll just kind of uh, talk about the. Um, uh, what happened uh, last week, which was kind of uh, the Get Native Tracer uh, PR that we worked on, um, was finally merged after a long time. Uh, so I'll just recap kind of how it started, uh, what's included in the PR, the impacts it, it, it does for us streaming fast, but also the the older graphical system, and uh, we'll finish maybe with some quick question if uh, people are kind of happy to. To dig that. So um, everything started actually almost one year and a half ago when Alex uh, went to um, a conference, eat, eat conference. I don't remember which one exactly. Bogota. I was there. Bogota. Bogota. Well, thank yeah, you. When he met Sina. Oh, the, 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 the OG is there. Perfect. So at that time, uh, Alex and maybe probably Pedro, they, they met with Sina from the Git team and we had this discussion to upstream the files tracer that we worked on in the last kind of four years back in Get directly. And the team was really kind of receptive to uh, to our ask. And they decided that they had a, a pretty big tracer already done, but it was not granular enough to fed with uh, what files was doing at that time and still doing today. And uh, that's how it started. And um, uh, over the past, let's say, uh, the last year, mostly, it, it took it, it's a long work, 10 to 12 months of work with Sina. They proposed an initial kind of version, and then we started kind of uh, porting our firewalls tracer to it and filling the gaps, mainly kind of uh, the big difference now is that first they added what they call a live tracer. So it's a tracer that works while the chain is synchronizing its own block, emitting tracing events, and um, there's an, a quite a, a small interface that we implement and we are able to uh, intercept everything that happened at any level of granularity because that's the second big change that we did was adding all those missing hooks for the tracer to be able to record anything that is state change while the ex execution happened. So, you know, account balance, code, storage changes, 
whatever happened that makes any changes to the blockchain and is useful for debugging and introspection feature, uh, we added hooks for that. So at one point in time, we were one-to-one -one backward compatible with what Firewalls was. So mainly that essentially we ported the, the core logic of the Firewalls tracer without the implementation, mostly. And um, at some point they remove a small hook that we had before, which was called on new account. So we are not totally backward compatible anymore um, due to this change because in fact, it was bogus. It, it appeared that we had some wrong assumption about where it was hooked. So we had kind of wrong data going there for um, no good reason. So at some point we'll deprecate that field, which is not quite used to, to be honest anyway. Uh, so essentially we are one-to-one -one backward compatible now with our small fork. Uh, what does it change for the graph string fast and everyone? Uh, first, it will reduce the maintenance costs very uh, with a good amount because we'll just maintain a one single file that um, implement the, the interface, the tracing interface, which means that for the changes that are going to conflicts, they are kind of minimal, if not zero. Uh, as long as the interface of the tracer and the instrumentation point don't change, uh, bumping version will be kind of uh, just merging the right tag in the right branch and that will be it. So that, that's going to reduce costs of that maintenance. Second big goal that this is going to bring for everyone is that it will be much easier to support new chain that are get forks because there's a lot of chain that are using get as their execution engine. Uh, namely, we have BSC, Polygon, their Psy doing some work, there's Phantom, uh, Optimism and Arbitrum are also using some get fork, which is uh, super, super easy to add support for new chain because it's mainly bringing one file and uh, everything is working. So that's really great as a uh, a maintenance per perspective and expansion perspective also, right? Because it will be much easier to add more stuff. Uh, future plan that we have right now, uh, Chainsafe uh, was working with us on the Aragon Firewalls Tracer and they agreed to port uh, over time a uh, different uh, piece of the get native tracer back to Aragon. So the goal is that Aragon and get will have the exact same tracing interface, tracing interface, meaning that we'll be able to easily kind of have the file tracer in both world. So people that are, uh, that prefer to use the Aragon stack will be able to use it with the same kind of level of support, hopefully. And the goal will be to open the PR on Aragon in the upcoming weeks. And hopefully we'll be able to get that merge back in the upstream Aragon. And uh, that will probably close the loop at that time. So I think it's uh, that's a good overview of what we did. It's, it, it does not go in detail and I don't think it's right important, but um, next week in the, the two next week, I'm going to run some more production workload on the Firewalls tracer, the new one, the, the one with the get native tracer. Uh, that's something that we did not do so far. Uh, what we did, though, it was comparing blocks on uh, Sepolia, and we were, uh, were at the same block production for the first 3.5 million blocks. We had a small dip that I did not investigate so far, but it's something in the Firewalls Tracer directly on some edge cases. And once I have fixed that, probably next week or the week after, we're going to start launching kind of production uh, workload on the files tracer with live blocks going and everything. So that's kind of the, the current uh, final steps of, of all this uh, work stream that has started almost two years ago. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Matthew. Yeah. Very bullish. I mean, this to me is super interesting starting to see the uh, fire hose becoming the uh, standard way for blockchain data extraction, let's say, um, also as a storage medium to some extent um, on the major execution clients. And yeah, as Matthew mentioned, now chains can benefit from Firehose and Substream support. Um, all those that are Git-based, at least, um, that is awesome. So, and to add a point, Semiotic is working also on making uh, firewalls more referable at the receipt level and the epoch validation. So I'm working a little bit with uh, another Pedro there 
uh, hopefully is the right name i got it right but mm -hmm. working with him a little bit to get it um more verifiability in the firewalls uh data that is produced not at every step like the tracing is maybe too uh too granular to really uh, assert but there's a lot of stuff that we can verify and semiotic is working on that uh, as we speak so that's great right on so just to close the loop um the benefit from for future chains will be also native support for substreams substreams will also be natively supported on our um, at the protocol level let's say substreams will be on our network soon and so um chains that are get based can already benefit from the existing graph node integration for subgraph support leveraging the uh EVM JSON RPC API that Graph knows already is, is already compliant with. But through this new work, yeah, Firehose and Substreams will also be there. So in the future, the dev community for all of these get based chains will benefit from Substreams, Dettl tooling and ecosystem that's around it, being able to do data, data transformation with Rust in the future SQL or in the very near future benefit from the different syncs existing but also build what we call the substreams powered subgraphs which we covered on um, past calls and we're not going to go into the details here but i can leave some uh, links to the docs and uh, old workshops and yes so if there's any chain that wants to benefit from all of this uh, and work on this firehose integration and it's some tech support or whatever please feel free to reach out there's also the chain integration process that the foundation is uh, leading this large initiative, and that makes it also easy for EVM chains to um, have full the graph support. Um, that means having your developers um, publishing subgraphs while we're in a decentralized network. So that's that's incredible. Um, just reading some of the last messages from Alexi will enable fast trusted bootstrapping of new firehose indexers. Yes, indeed, called Firehose Snapsync. Oh, there's a name. Um, awesome. We have four minutes. Alexa, do you want to do you want to talk about this? I don't want to put you on the spot. Too late, Alexi. It's a, it's already the official name. <laughs> yeah, now it's Snapsync. Firehose Snapsync. Snapsync. Oh, are you co-host? Can you do you want to speak, Alexi, to this or maybe in the future? Maybe co-host. I can't unmute. Yeah, now you can. You, you got us hooked now. Well, yeah, I don't have much to, don't have much to declare here, I have to admit. <laughs> Just that, yeah, the, the goal, one of the low hanging fruit we want to enable with the verifiable Firehose data, of course, it's going to be enable all kinds of stuff, but um, it would, it would let indexers, at least for Ethereum for now, uh, just snap sync, guess, Download the file from any firehose in a uh, you know a trustless way. Basically, uh, verify all the files, uh, and yeah, be ready in a week, basically, or maybe less. Actually, uh, depend how fast you can, how fast of a CPU you have to check your files, and how fast you can download the files. Uh, that's it. So yeah, that is awesome. Pretty cool. Instead of doing a, a guess full, full sync from Genesis and wait through that, right? Yeah, the nice thing and is also, that you can't trust one single party uh, or in this case, not trust because it's verifiable. Yeah. So that is the nice part, not just trust yeah. any archive snapshot that maybe someone put out there yes. or whatever, it's different, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and then that's also gonna feed into the whole uh, verifiable indexing, right? The fact yeah. that we have verifiable firehose it's going to trickle down all the way down the stack is that's the that's the plan yeah yeah cool we'll have more of these calls for us to go over once we hit those milestones in the upcoming months and we'll take the time to go through all of that but yeah thanks for plugging that in alexi all right and like i said all of this is in the forum so do check out the monthly core dev updates that's uh, probably the best way to keep to be updated with everything that's happening. There's a lot. 
and uh, subscribe to future calls if you want to join and talk to the uh, core key contributors here. So with that said, two minutes, um, I don't see any questions or messages, so we can take two minutes back. Thank you all for joining. I'll see you in a month. This will be on YouTube, like I mentioned. Um, and yeah, thank you all. Have a good day. Bye.